Well, I am Michael Maggio. Um, if you haven't seen me speak already, I am the, uh, the head of the application development business line, uh, currently in the mainframe section. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the exciting news we, we, not, we announced yesterday with our application lifecycle conductor product. And I teased a lot of people saying that now we have ALM that allows us to connect the application development world from mainframe to mobile. We need to go down to the tools level and actually show you how you take products like Gen and turn those applications into web services. But I didn't show the product. So I'm going to show you that today, talk about how that fits into our grand scheme of things in the application development space. And you heard it say in the keynote about the Internet of Everything, the Internet of, 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 of basically anything you can plug and get an IP address to. And that's really where we're going, right? Application development is going to be writing software for pretty much everything and anything. But what's not going to change is that that software is going to get its data from basically a system of records. It's going to have somewhere where it knows it's you or your records or your information or your, or your customer's information. We need to connect those two pieces together. We need to be able to connect what's going on in the back end to what's going on when you start writing applications for the new real world and the Internet of Things. So I'll refresh your memory if you guys have seen this presentation. Really, where is application development coming from when you think about it in terms of what we at CA used to think of application development world in the mainframe to where it is today, which is application development leveraging all of our assets in the mainframe. And how has that changed our world? It's changed our world in a way that we no longer have to worry about staid um, declining environments. That we never, now we really have to worry about this rapid changing agile development world where it's growing by leaps and bounds. And in fact, this new market for mainframe application development um, is really hitting home at the conference. As we started showing some of our technology yesterday, um, I've been inundated with requests for how do we tie in our legacy systems? How do we tie in our distributed systems? Because we need to get mobile applications out the door faster. And it sounds like what you guys are talking about is exactly the problems we're trying to solve, which is how do I connect the different ca components of my application development environment together so I can actually deal with this new world of DevOps? Um, I, I was in about six or seven one-on-one -on -one meetings this morning, and every one of them told me the same problem, which is we've been using CA products for a long time on the back end. We've used Endeavor to maintain our code, et cetera, but we don't know how to take that information and make it accessible to the front end, make it accessible to our Java developers, our Xcode developers, et cetera. And that's really what I want to talk about today is how do we do that. Five years ago, the green screen was the only way to get to your data. In my view, the green screen is dead. Uh, nobody younger than me really wants to use green screen anymore. Everybody wants the web or a GUI or something of that nature. CA is, has embraced the need for web-based application development and web-based testing. And without those sorts of things, there's no way we'd be able to keep up with the demands and the changes required to maintain business nowadays. Don's been one of our great spokespersons on the session we've been doing because he really is a prototypical CA customer. He has used our testing tools, our, our software change management products in the mainframe forever, and now as you heard in his testimonial, he's basically the end of a breed that actually knows how to deal with green screen development, et cetera. And all the people that are coming into his company are basically people that want to write these mobile and Java apps. The, uh, world test environment that we've been showing out for the last two days with our demonstration is a hotel application. Uh, the hotel application actually is a perfect example of the types of apps that we're hearing in the, in the marketplace. In fact, I was sitting down with a vendor that actually built a hotel application this morning, and I said, you need to look at what we're doing. I built in the old days an app basically by paper, right? I'd walk in and check into my hotel by signing a piece of paper, it would be on a record somewhere. And then we automated that over the years with computers popping up and in the mainframe world it was, I'm gonna build an application on the mainframe that's running on some um, data center somewhere and I can provide some front end green screen terminals so that the person at the registration desk can look up my name and check me in. Where we're going to, where we are, where we've been, is I walk in with my iPhone or my Android phone and I check myself into the hotel. But what's interesting about this progression is that all that data has really not moved. It stayed on the back end. And so that migration from the original mainframe where we basically built everything on the mainframe to migrating it to try and distribute it on the, on, on the world of, of, of .NET and Linux, et cetera, where we actually created new applications with Windows front ends, still access code on the back end mainframe. And where we are today, when I'm writing that mobile application for an iPhone or for an Android, I'm still talking to that back-end data. I'm still getting that information that was written 10, 20, 30 years ago because it still works and it represents my business model, what it is I'm trying to build. 
but the way I build it is very different. So instead of looking at disparate products, which we've done at CA for years, and looking at how do I manage my code on the mainframe with a product like Endeavor, or manage my code on the distributed world with products like Harvest, or how do I test my back-end data or my back-end logic with an ear test and file master, how do I build my application? Now, what's great about CA is that we have a history, even though the application development business lines are sort of reborn, but we have a history of over the years of allowing our customers to build into this kind of disparate environment with a product like Gen. Gen allows us to basically create a business model as to what we do. So in the hotel point of view, there's a business model that's very easy to understand. I have guests that come into my hotel. I have rooms that I need to, to rent out. I have a registration process. I can take those models and those processes and turn them into an application. And what was powerful about Gen 30 years ago is same about Gen today, which is I can still define the business logic and the data and let the technology be written for me by the application. Well, that's a great idea. The difference, however, is that back then, we only had basically a mainframe or we only had a distributed system or we had a very fixed set of things that we controlled, but today it goes back to it's the internet of everything. So I've got to stop thinking how I'm going to write code for one or two environments, but how am I going to write uh, basically services that can be accessed wherever they are? And so we're doing that by updating our portfolio, not just in Gen, but in all of our areas, updating our software change management products so they can access code wherever it is, updating our testing tools so that we can access from one single server, one point of control, all the information that might be running on a specific system, in this case, the mainframe, and then taking our development environments like Gen and turning them into really service generators. So I can actually, instead of generating code, I generate application services. And then, as I said, the big announcement from yesterday is bring that all together, that entire application lifecycle management product, into a single point of control, and that's what the application lifecycle conductor does. So quick refresh of the product line, but let me drill in a little bit specifically to one aspect of it, which is what we said is how do I build that application? So let's look at our typical mobile application. This is the one that, again, I, we talked about in the past that we wrote that is a real application running here on the floor. The only thing missing is the hotel. You can check in, you can register guests, they can check out, they extend their stays. And in fact, we've even changed something in the product. It currently allows you to look at the facilities available at the hotel, but we don't really see that being used very much. And so the hotel um, development team has decided we want to change that feature and make it a leave a comment message. And that, that functionality is actually in the mainframe that version, where I can actually leave a comment when I leave about how I like my stay. But I now want to put it into the mobile app so I can press a button and say, let's leave a comment when I'm leaving the hotel. So let's start doing that. First thing we did is, like I said, 10, 20 years ago, I could use a great product called CA Gen and I could define my application. So let's see how, what that looks like if people aren't familiar with Gen. Uh, like I said, to start with, I effectively define, oops, define my model. And how I define my model is I'd say, what am I interested in, right? Well, at a hotel, I'm interested in guests, registrations, and for this example, we're, we're going to be interested in effectively comment entities, things I want to leave. If you look at what Gen does, it allows you to drag and drop and draw those entities, allows you to go into those entities and define their attributes, if you will. So, for example, uh, a guest may have a username, a login, an email address, a Twitter address, a, face, a Facebook address. Typical drag and drop concepts of how do I define this entity? And once I define those entities, I can also define what I want to do with them. And so I can define a series of processes. In this case, the, computer, the, uh, the hotel demo allows me to do things like manage my guests, register them, uh, log them in, update their information. I can change reservations, a reservation management system, by canceling a reservation or updating a reservation or moving it to a different date. And then finally, for comment management, and this is the part I want to actually extend to my mobile phone, I can leave a comment, update a comment, or delete a comment. So all this functionality already exists in the application of the Gen model. And in fact, there's already an application running on a mainframe with a 3270 screen, and you can design those screens in Gen, and here's a perfect example of what the screens might look like, and here's a typical log-on screen for somebody coming in and figuring out what's to do. So while this is not a new product, you'll see over the, over the, over the next uh, coming times, we'll be taking Gen and continuing to enhance it so you can do more functionality, more server generation. Think about one of the biggest problems about um, APIs is that behind them is some application service. Well, how do you write that service? Well, today, a lot of people just write it in Java or .NET or in Visual Studio or in Xcode. 
Wouldn't it be nice if I could just drag that logic together, kind of what we've been doing in Gen for 20 or 30 years, and just publish it somewhere? That's what we're doing with Gen, making it a service generation tool. What's the next step, though? Once I've got that generation and services, I need to take a traditional service, in this case from Gen, it's a soap service, and turn it into something that's accessible to the outside world. Well, that's a RESTful API. And so what App Services Orchestrator does, our brand new product from CA, is takes things directly from Gen, or takes information directly from our API portal, our API gateway, and with one click turns it into a RESTful service, but more importantly can customize that service and be called in different ways that are more, more, more informative to your end users. And to take those services, and you heard that presentation this morning about what people are trying to do, mashing up those services to create new applications. So really application development today is really about API management, API integration. And so we've just connected the world of Gen into the world of API management. And with basically one fell swoop with this application, we've brought Gen into the new decade, the new millennium of how you build applications through API management. Okay, now that I've got my services pretty straightforward, I can tell the mobile developer, here's the service for, for, for leaving a comment when you leave. It's called leave comment. It's a REST service. Here's the parameters. Go write your code. Now, what's great about that is when the app developer goes and writes this code in his, in his native language, let's say it's Xcode and Objective-C, they have no idea that service came from the mainframe. In fact, they don't even care. So you don't need any expertise about how the mainframe had that service by just using a new RESTful API to get it done. So when I'm all done, I can now basically follow that process from the original development in Gen all the way through orchestration and app services orchestrator and finally to the step of actually building it in my, in my local IDE. A lot of code there. So how do I manage all that code? By looking at the underlying SCM tools and bringing that information into a, the new product that we've been talking about on the floor is a unified software change management product. The ability to see where code's been written, whether it's the mainframe or the mobile device, and making sure that as I'm a developer, whatever I've touched, I've marked that I've touched it, I know what's happened to it, I know what release it's been assigned to. And finally, the last piece of the data that we talked about yesterday and announced and we're showing on the floor and again, getting lots of excitement is really how do I bring that whole process together, not just the code, but who wrote it, what requirement, where the testing happened, where the release happened. I do that with the application lifecycle conductor. But drilling back into our application development process, let me show you how it works. So here's sort of a schematic as to what happened, right? I have on, the, on one side CA Gen or CA Plex, another one of our products that has the information about the hotel sitting in it. And what I need to do is take that information and turn it into a web service. So what you're looking at here is Gen Studio. Gen Studio takes the exact same model that was built with the Gen product and allows me to take those actions and with a single click, grab the action and generate new services. If you can actually read through here what the service that we generated was leaving a comment, deleting a comment, and updating a comment. What I then want to do is take those services and publish them to the API gateway. You'll see here the word layer seven, that was the previous name of the API gateway. This product, because this is actually running an earlier version of the product that just is in beta right now. And all I do in this dialog box is specify the parameters to where to find the gateway, what my login credentials are, et cetera. And, and simply with a click of the button, it takes those services and automatically publishes them to the API gateway. So now it's sitting in the API gateway, ready for me to actually take it and do some work with it. Next stop is to take that information that's now sitting in the gateway and turn it into RESTful services so that I can actually call it from my application to the outside world or mash it up with other RESTful services so I can have a new application developed from that. So what we're showing you now is this is App Services Orchestrator. It is a web-based development tool. It's tightly integrated with the API gateway. And what it allows you to do, as I said, is go directly back to the portal. You'll see the gen service that's already published there, and I can take that gen service First inspect it to make sure I've got the right service. This is just gratuitous. You probably would say, I know what I was getting. I picked it right out of the board. It was get comment. You can see the WSDL, which was the SOAP version of how do I get access to that information. But I can either, with a single click of the button, now say, go create a RESTful service for me. Or to make this more interesting, the demo, I'm going to customize that and say, here are the services available inside of this one larger service. How do I turn them into more human-readable services on a RESTful side so that my application developer can grab them? So we did something really silly like leave a comment. That is a post method. I'm going to put information into the database on the mainframe. I'm going to change to just comment. And so you'll see, if you're a web developer, the traditional HTTP slash web service name slash comment question mark, and then what parameters do you want to pass in? And so we've now gone 
literally in a matter of minutes from effectively one could argue a staid mainstream application running out there in green screen to accessibility of all of its functions onto a set of web services. And those web services, again, is what the application developer of today is used to, develop, used to developing with. What's happening also behind the scenes, and I don't show it here because we showed it yesterday and you can see it anywhere, is that all of these processes are orchestrated together through the app, app life cycle, application lifecycle conductor. So I don't need to remember, well, when I publish in Gen, what's the next step? The ASO developer, we get a notification saying these services are now published. They're, here's where they are. Go get them. And that person can bring up inside of the uh, application lifecycle conductor actually a view of what those services look like, and that's what you were seeing there. And then finally, the last step is pretty straightforward. Now we're in the world of today. We're in the world that I go hire a developer at a university or uh, somebody who's basically been working in, at Google or wherever it is and said, you know what, I need you to go build me a mobile app. And they say, great, where's the service? And I'm used to using Xcode for my iPhone app. I've got it. They have no idea what Kix is. They have no idea what a mainframe is. They have no idea this is running on the back end. All they know is this is the application development environment I'm used to dealing with. And what they're doing here is they're just calling the web service that was handed to them from ALC through the ASO development. And they're saying, I'm just going to plug it in. I'm going to go test it out by associating this specific button called post with this rest call, which is going to pass the parameters of where am I, what's the message I want to leave, and go put it on the database. And again, you want to see a demo, we'll show you that there's actually an app running on my iPhone that does exactly this. I can leave a message. Next thing you know, on some DB2 database running somewhere else is this comment that came in from my iPhone. Simplistic example, but this is a small sample of really what happens in the real world. When I swipe my credit card, when I book a reservation on my iPhone, when I actually check into a hotel, even though I'm doing it on my mobile device, all the activity is happening on the back-end server. And we've just made that connection really easy for developers, for our customers. So the last step here just to show it's working is they're testing it by bringing up a sample simulator, clicking on post, and sure enough, it's actually posted it um, to the repository. And how do we know? Like I said, everything was tied into ALC. So what you're seeing here is the back end of the application lifecycle conductor following that progress that started from yesterday's, if you remember that session where I said, I'm going to add a new function uh, into my project and ask my developers to actually build a new comment into the code. And I'm going to go away and see what happens. And then the process just managed its way through the gen developer to the service orchestrator to the Mac developer. And when it was all done, it came back and said, OK, your, your, your application is ready to go. So kind of cool, all right? <laughs> And those people who have been using Gen say, of course, I've been using it forever. That's how cool it is. <laughs> and it's very easy, very straightforward. And we'd love you guys to take a second look if you haven't seen Gen or if you haven't seen the App Services Orchestrator. We actually encourage you to go see that uh, in, our, in our demonstration sessions at the front of here. But to tie it all together, this is the most important part. Is that, how, this is a, that was a simple example. When you have thousands of developers writing thousands of pieces of code, Regardless of how powerful the tools are underneath, like Gen, like ASO, like Endeavor, like Harvest, and all the tools that our other parties work with, the real challenge is how do I make sure my process works? And again, that's what ALC does. So that requirement that I needed to add a new comment came out of, say, Clarity or came out of version 1. That requirement then got pushed into different things that it touches. Well, it's touching a DB2 database, so let's bring up FileMaster. It's bringing these COBOL applications, so if they crash, let's see where that happens. Let's tie it into the application development environment we're using, in this case, Gen and the App Services Orchestrator. Let's develop tests for those automatically, and let's go run those tests under a virtualized environment, say with service virtualization. When I'm done running them and everything works, let's go push this out to the world, release automation. And of course, when it's running, let's make sure that things are going OK. So I'm going to go look at CAAPM or CAUIM to keep track of things inside of the application lifecycle conductor. If things are blowing up on me, I'll know right away. I can go to my service desk application and tie that right back into the requirement, the code, and the people that wrote it. And that's really the whole idea. You've seen a really nice integration of, of basically building an application the old way to building an application where we go today, which is moving from mainframe data, mainframe logic, to really tying it into the mobile front end. Mainframe is still important. That's where all the data is stored. That's where all the programs run. We need to get stuff done quicker. We need to have programs turned over quicker. And without testing tools like CA supplies, there'd be no way we could get the stuff out on the schedule we need to. And hopefully for Don and for you guys, as you check out the new product offerings that we have, the new portfolio we have, you'll see that that's really the case, that those people 
that were familiar in writing in a mainframe environment that now have to figure out how they've used all that investment they made in their, in their data and in their logic and make, be accessible to the new world of the Internet of Everything. How do I build a mobile front end, not just to an iPhone, not just to an Android, but how do I do it to the Apple Watch? How do I do it to the Pebble? How will I do it for my, for my screen on my refrigerator? We just don't know where software is going to take us. We do know that we want to leverage what we, we had built in the past, which all the right logic is there, all the right data is there, and how we bring that information forward so we can make it accessible to our users. And today we're doing that by re, relaunching the application development business line, taking our existing products and putting them into a way that can be accessible to all developers. That includes our maintaining tools like FileMaster and Intertest, our modernization tools like Gen and Plex, and our software management tools like Endeavor and Harvest, augmenting them with technology and new products that allow me to bring into the front. Managing through the application lifecycle conductor, building new services with the app services orchestrator, and managing all of my assets end to end with the unified software change manager. So that's the new portfolio. That's where we've taken Gen into the future. That's where we're taking all of our products into the future through this process. And with that, there's still a lot more going on on the floor. There's still tons of booths that will show you where you can actually see these products. I really encourage you to go see uh, demos, although I've heard that the line is stacking up. Uh, poor guys haven't gotten away from the booth because they've been showing them all off, which is great to hear. And there's still a few more sessions left. I'll actually pre be presenting an off-floor session in a little while with a totally different application that shows you how Application Lifecycle Conductor can actually work with a contemporary web app and deals with the DevOps issues and integrates it with CA release automation. So if you want, you can go see that off-floor presentation. I think it's around 4 o'clock, and you'll see the title around DevOps. Um, also, we'll be presenting tomorrow morning in the DevOps Cineplex to show a similar type sample there in a slightly shorter and more public format. And I encourage you to, to continue to, to talk to people here, talk to our our, our demonstrators who are really our product managers and tell them what you like and what you like to see going forward. So with that, I want to thank you for listening to me. Have any questions, I'd love to take them afterwards. Thanks.